This is part two of the Park Practice Test Overview. Having learned how to navigate the test, we will now look at a number of tools the test provides. These tools are available to all students and will help them determine the best answer for each problem. The first is a magnifier, a line reader, a notepad, an answer eliminator, a pointer highlighter, a pop-up glossary, writing tools, a ruler, protractor, and exhibits, which are different reference sheets. To use the magnifier, click on the drop-down arrow under the guest icon and select the magnifier. A box appears on the screen that can be moved anywhere you want to make text bigger. This can assist you to make sure you're getting the understanding of each word. To use the line reader tool, click on the drop down menu by the guest icon and click on show hide line reader. The line reader that shows needs to be sized so that it makes sense. It can be made shorter and you can cover more text by making this a little longer. To use a line reader tool, put your arrow in the middle and then read your line and slide it down to the next line and then slide it down to the next line. To make the line reader tool disappear, click on the drop down menu and click on the show hide line reader. The notepad tool can be found by using this icon right up here. When you click on it, a notepad opens up and gives you a spot for taking some notes. If you've looked over this first test at all in grade 3, it has a story that has a lot of different characters who like a lot of different things. So one idea might be to keep track as you read through the story of all the different animals and what they like. So Striped Chickmunk, he likes, he likes nuts and acorns. As we go through the story, there's Peter Rabbit, and he likes carrots and cabbage. This can be continued for all the different animals in the story, and will help you then as you move the notepad over to answer some of the questions. The notepad is specific for a problem. If you close it, everything you typed in will be there when you come back, but all those notes won't be there for the next question. This question has a notepad of its own. But if you go back to the prior question and open the notepad, everything we took notes of is still there. The answer eliminator can be turned on by clicking on this X right here. When it's turned on and you hover over an answer, you'll see a red X appear. This can be used to help yourself keep track of which answers you know are not right. You have to be careful because you can use it to X out any answer. And that's no help because we know that one of these is the answer. So you have to use it being smart not thinking that the test is going to help you out somehow. Let's look at this problem. It says the owners of a new toy store have 888 puzzles to sell. They sell 237 puzzles the first month. They sell 461 puzzles the second month. In part A it asks, which of these shows the three given numbers, each rounded to the nearest 10? Now, if you have 888 puzzles, we know that that rounds up to 890. So looking at A with an 880, where they round it down, we know that's not the answer. B's got that 880 also. We know B is not the answer. That makes it a lot easier to realize that either C or D must be the correct answer. I'll leave that for you to figure out. The pointer tool can be turned on by clicking on the arrow right up here 
next to the Notepad tool. When it's selected and you click and drag over some text, it will highlight the text in blue and then you can choose to change the color to yellow, pink, or blue. This can be done for multiple parts of text. A great use of this will be to highlight important parts of a story. This is the Johnny Chuck story that we just worked on earlier. And rather than using the notepad, this is a story where we could come down and we could say, Striped Chickmunk likes his nuts and acorns. And so we'll track those in yellow. Peter Rabbit like the carrots and cabbage, so we'll make sure we keep those two together in pink. And you can do this for some other colors. If you make a mistake, you can highlight everything and just click on the white button. This will kind of put everything back to the way it was when we started. The pop-up glossary can be found for words that are underlined with little dots. In this story here, in the grade 3 literacy test, question number 4, the story Me First has a word snouts underlined with some dots. A question mark appears when you hover over it with your mouse, and if you click on it, a glossary definition shows up stating that snouts means noses. If you scroll down a little further in the story, in sentence 19, it says, the small creature curtsied. If you hover over the curtsied, you'll see it has a question mark. And if you click on it, the glossary says that it means that she bent her knees and bowed. The writing tools can be used to help you write a written response to a prompt. This is question number 13 in the third grade English language arts literacy test. The story, a once in a lifetime experience, talks about Derek going on a camping trip with the Adams family. Nothing seems to go right. On my notepad, I wrote down a list of all the things that went wrong. When you're doing the writing tools, you can bold text, italicize text, or even underline. You can bullet things in a list. So for example, if I take all the things that went wrong, I can copy them from the notepad and paste them into my response. Putting them in a bullet point dresses it up a little bit. You can also copy and paste from Word. If you make a mistake, you can either undo or redo your work. The good writing is all up to you though. To use the ruler, click on this icon right between the pointer and the answer eliminator. When you click on it, a ruler will show on the screen. You can move the ruler by clicking it and dragging it to wherever you want. This problem does not specifically ask us to measure anything. I couldn't find anything on the practice tests, tests asking for a measurement. So we're just going to use this one because it has some fun shapes. Remember that when you're using the ruler, if we're going to measure the bottom of this triangle, we don't line up the edge of the ruler with the line. We have to line up a zero with the edge of the line. And now you can see that the base of this triangle is about one and one quarter inches long. If you want to measure the length of this hypotenuse, 
you'll need to move the ruler on an angle. This can be done by clicking on this end and turning the ruler so that it's parallel to the line you want to measure. Almost there. Then move the zero to the beginning of where you would like to measure and you can see that this hypotenuse is about one, one half, three, and one and three quarters of an inch long. This one's kind of fun. Get out the ruler and play around with it a little bit. To use the protractor, click on the protractor button and a protractor will appear on the screen. To move it around, click anywhere on the protractor, hold and drag with your mouse. The white cross in the middle of the protractor needs to be lined up with a vertex of an angle in order to measure it. So if I'm measuring angle B here, I need the white cross to be right on this vertex. This ray looks like it's hitting right at zero, so I can measure all the way around. And this ray is coming out right in here. It looks like this is a 165 degree angle. You can also measure an angle like C here by rotating the protractor. To rotate the protractor, click on either of these buttons, these circles, and rotate until the protractor is parallel to the first ray that you want to lay the protractor alongside of. That looks about it. I'm going to grab my protractor, move my cross to the vertex. This looks about lined up. I'm a little bit off, but I'm at 10, 20, 30, 40. This looks pretty much to be a 50 degree angle. Now, I got so excited about using the protractor, I didn't even read the question. I'm going to turn the protractor off come back up to the top and it said which angle has a measure of 65 degrees. So let's bring the protractor back on and try A here. And you will see that with this line coming out to 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, we are right at 65 degrees for this angle. Have fun with the protractor. To use the exhibits, click on the exhibits button over on the right side of your screen. A reference sheet with different conversion information will show up that will be of assistance in some of the problems. Unfortunately, it's not moving around the screen for me, so I'm just going to close it right now. In this problem from the grade 5 mathematics test, it says that Tom has a water tank that holds 5 gallons. In part B, it tells us that he drinks 4 pints in of, of water a day and it asks how many full tanks of water will he drink in 30 days. Now one of the quick calculations that we know is that 4 times 30 is 120 and so he, we know that he drinks 120 pints within that 30 days. The question that we have to figure out is how many full tanks of water that is. And full tanks of water are 5 gallons. If we go back to the exhibits, we can see that one quart is made up of two pints and that four quarts make up a gallon. So if four quarts make a gallon and there are two pints in every quart, there are eight pints in a gallon. If we knew that no, that Tom drank 120 pints, 120 divided by eight will give us the number of full tanks of water. In this case, that would be 15 gallons of water, but each tank holds 5 gallons, so 15 divided by 5 equals 3. Thanks for watching part 2, test taking tools. Next, we'll take a look at part 3, test taking skills.